everybody. Welcome back. Um, okay, so this is the final one in our Shibori introduction series. We have the, the pieces. We've already dipped them into the vat, and I have rinsed them. And I've also rinsed them in Blue Dawn to get the majority of the, the indigo out of there. So we're going to do a grand reveal now on all of these so you can see what the different bindings look like with the different um, the different materials that I've used. Okay, this one here we've used regular clamps and we have used wood for our shibori. Now this is one, ooh, this is neat. This is one that I had previously rust dyed. And there are actually two in here. These are handkerchiefs. That turned out pretty awesome. Now I'm going to be giving everything another wash here. So I'm just going to set this up on the bar and then I'll give it another wash and then I'll dry it and then we'll be able to, to use it. But very interesting. Okay. This is a this is a silk scarf, and this one has our small shibori tiles on it. I also put two rubber bands around it before I started to do the tying, just to make it a little bit easier. Here are the blue the shibori tiles. These can be washed and then reused, so they're really good. The wood ones, see this is what happens. This is, it, it delaminates from itself and it comes up and you will never, ever, ever have that happen with our tiles. So keep that in mind when you're doing, when you're doing your, your sourcing of your materials. Okay, this one here, we have folded, it was folded into a triangle shape, and then we put the tiles on there, and this is a wild rag, or it could be used for a regular scarf, but um, for those in the ranching industry, you know, this is a wild rag. So that is how that looks. You, you can get so many different colors or, and you can get so many different effects just from the way these things are folded. And if you look, look closely at this, you can also see there are darker blues, there are lighter blues. I could have came in for an extra dip on that if I have something that doesn't quite look how I wanted it to. I can uh, very easily do it again and send it through. Now this is a t-shirt. It has rubber bands and I'm just nicking these rubber bands here. You can reuse your, your rubber bands, but most of the time it doesn't really pay to do that because they hold a little bit of that color and most of the time, the rubber, the rubber bands, especially your smaller, skinnier ones, are not going to be that strong anyhow. So it's not a huge loss to go ahead and just get rid of them. I'm just taking my scissors and nicking it. And then that'll come free. Like I said, I had rinsed these in water and then also I rinsed them with some Blue Dawn and that just helps to get any of the residual color out of there. I'm still going to have to do another rinse cycle on here because you're always going to have a little bit more where your binding was that you're not able to get out and also it's just, uh, it's just a good thing to 
give it an extra rinse once you have all of your bindings off because you'll be able to do the whole garment. One more. Okay. Oh wait, one more. Now we're free. All right. So that turned out pretty neat. These are going to undergo another washing. So I'm just letting them drip out so you can see what these things turned out as. This here is a little tote bag. And I have some of the medium size shibori tiles of ours in here. I really like the way they cut off on here. <laughs> that is slick. When I started this is what I did was I took a rubber band and I just attached my piles on there so I had a good base for when I was doing the wrapping. Again, Perfectly reusable. And this is what this turned out as. And this is the little tote bag. You can also do something creative here and here and here and here. Or you could just leave it the way it is. It's kind of cool how you get the lines from where the string was. Let's do this little silk scarf. There's a lot going on with this one here. Let me get it going. And I'm just lifting up a little bit and then I'm giving it a cut. When I put these on here is what I did was I took two of the smaller thickness rubber bands and I went around it just so it would close off a little bit more real estate. If I would have used a single one, it would have been so thin, it would not have been as noticeable. So I went with two rubber bands. You know, and this is something you can even go with more rubber bands on it as well too. It just depends on how distinct you want your pattern to be. Two more. Now when I did this is what I did was I just wrapped up a silk scarf, kind of wound it around itself, and then I put the rubber bands in there so it would have a stripe look. So this is what this looks like. Sock. Let's try a sock. Ooh. 
Oh, interesting. That is exciting. Let's see what his little friend looks like. See if I can give you a good close up. Okay, this one here has been tied around a PVC. This is a t shirt. Let's see how this one turned out. You have to be careful not to cut the fabric whenever you do this. Now this one, when I put it on here, I put it on here and then I twisted it. I'm not really sure how this is going to work out. Ooh, look at that. You can still see some of it where it has not oxidized. That turned out really different. I was not expecting that. But that's the neat thing about doing fabric. Uh, projects is you just don't know what to expect. Now this green it will oxidize and it will turn to the darker blue just like everything else is. That's part of the natural process. Let's do this big guy now. This is our big tile. I sure like how they cut and easily come off. Look at this on the, the wood. It has completely opened itself up and separated. So it looks like that one is going in the trash. Okay, this is a t-shirt that we did with the big tile. And we kind of a different look with it. I can imagine this is a tablecloth or something like that where you would get a really neat design where this is a little bit open and not colored on the top is what I will probably do is I will probably um, put that back in the vat with another effect and we'll see what happens with that then. I like to have a little bit more color 
Although I'm sure there are people out there that like it a little bit more white and not quite as vibrant, but I like it to have a little bit more character. And I also like to see how it bleeds. Like this here, look how neat that is, um, how it's bled into that area of clear. Now with this is what I've done is I actually use three tiles. I have one tile on top, one tile on the bottom, and one tile in the middle. So it has a little bit of a different look. And I've wrapped everything around this middle tile. If I can figure out how, there we go. Got to get him out. Oh, this one turned out pretty neat. Sorry about that. Oh, I love the way this one has bled. Look at that. one. This is one that I have been wanting to see. This is a handkerchief that I had done the rust dye on and I put these big heavy duty rubber bands all over it. So with any luck we are going to have circles that will have the rust on it. Let's see what happens. This one's fighting me, so I'm going to cut it. Maybe one more. Ooh, wow. Nope. Never fear. One more. Okay. Oh, this is this is what I had hoped it would do. You can still see the rust through there, and it just gives you a, another look. Okay, this is our final one. This is a t-shirt, and I have put rubber bands around it, and these are the big heavier rubber bands. So we should have more of a distinct pattern. in here and what I did was I used some of the glass tiles like you can get with these things like the little rocks and then the little blocks for mosaic I put those in there so is what that does is it makes 
makes a little pouch for it. And whenever you put it in the indigo, it holds it out a little bit more. Once I get all of these off, we'll see what this final one looks like. Thank you for viewing our videos and all of your support. We do a lot of fun things. Uh, this is just the newest of our classes that we do. Barn quilts are a very, very popular class that we do. We travel all over Nebraska. I wrote uh, the first and only book on how to do barn quilts start to finish. And I do a really deep dive into the whole process so you can make a barn quilt that will last. Okay, so this is the back and this is the front. I'm gonna give these all a, a good final rinse and then we'll be able to sell them in our store. Um, we'll be able to do different projects with them. And uh, if you have any questions, give us a call, let us know. If you're interested in doing any classes, we do this, a lot of other ones, and look forward to talking to you later. Have a great day, bye.